deference, also called the ductus deference, the penis, the testes, note that only one testicle is shown in this diagram, the scrotum, the bulbal urethral gland, the prostate gland, and finally, the seminal vesicle. You have to have a basic understanding of location in order to understand function and how all these structures work together. We will begin with the testes, the male gonad. This is a diagram of the longitudinal section through one testicle, so you can now see what's inside. Notice that the majority of the testicle is composed of seminiferous tubules. These tubules produce sperm via spermatogenesis. But how? Let's take a closer look. In order to do this, we need to zoom in on the seminiferous tubule and take a cross section through the tubule. Imagine taking a garden hose and cutting it in half. This would be similar to cutting the tubule in half and looking at what's inside. The lumen of the seminiferous tubule is lined by cells called Sertoli cells. These Sertoli cells are connected via tight junctions. Lining the outside of the Sertoli cells is a layer of smooth muscle. Outside of the Sertoli cells are the Leydig cells. These are all the cells that are really important. In addition to these structures, you will need to be familiar with the following compartments, the basal compartment and the luminal compartment. These compartments are basically talking about regions of the cross section. If we are talking about the basal compartment, we are talking about the area that goes from the tight junction toward that smooth muscle. And if we are talking about the luminal compartment, we are talking about the area that goes from the tight junction toward the lumen. Now that you are familiar with the structures, let's focus on their functions. We begin with the Leydig cells, also called interstitial cells. The Leydig cells secrete testosterone. The Sertoli cells support sperm development, or what is referred to as spermatogenesis. The smooth muscle surrounding these Sertoli cells allows for peristalsis. This process is important as it will propel sperm through the seminiferous tubules. Well, that's all fine and dandy that the Sertoli cells produce the sperm, but how do the sperm get out of the seminiferous tubules and out of the testes? This is our next goal. So here are the sperm in the seminiferous tubules. The sperm has been produced by the Sertoli cells and released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. Those sperm then travel through this little region here called the reti, testes, and into the efferent ductules. This is the point at which the sperm exit the testes. From the efferent ductules, the sperm enter the epididymis and will ultimately make their way to the vas deferens. So that is the pathway the sperm are taking to get out of the testes. What propelled the sperm through all those structures? Peristalsis. Now the sperm are in the vas deferens, right? The vas deferens connects with the seminal vesicles to form the ejaculatory duct. At this point, the sperm is mixed with fluid that came from the seminal vesicles. The ejaculatory duct penetrates through the prostate gland to join the urethra. As such, the sperm wind up in the urethra, which receives substances from the bulbal urethral glands. Thus, both urine and sperm are in the urethra. So that was just the pathway that sperm take from the seminiferous tubules to the urethra. Now, let's look more closely at the accessory glands I mentioned earlier. The seminal vesicles secrete an alkaline fluid that contains fructose, enzymes, and prostaglandins. Remember, alkaline fluids are basic. The purpose of this alkaline fluid is to neutralize the acid that is in the female reproductive tract. The fructose is used for energy. Remember, sperm have to swim, so they need energy for motility. The enzymes in the fluid facilitate semen clotting. There are also prostaglandins in this fluid. These are for motility and viability of the sperm. The prostate gland is another accessory gland. The prostate gland secretes citrate which is an energy source for sperm motility and enzymes that will break down the semen clot once it is in the female reproductive tract. Okay, so take a second to make sure you understand. The semen clots during ejaculation and is then broken down once it's inside the female reproductive tract. The last accessory gland is the bulbal urethral glands. These glands secrete a fluid that contain mucus. 
Why is mucus important? It serves as a lubricant. It includes two glands called testicles or testes. They're located inside a pouch of skin called the scrotum. The scrotum is outside the body, which keeps the testicles cool enough to make sperm. Connected to each testicle is a mass of coiled tubes called the epididymis. Each epididymis stores immature sperm while they continue to develop. During sex, sperm travel through a tube attached to the epididymis, called the vas deferens, to another tube called the ejaculatory duct. There, sperm mix with fluid from two glands, called seminal vesicles, as well as the prostate gland. Now called semen, this fluid mixture exits the body through the urethra, the tube inside the penis that usually carries urine. During sex with a woman, this process, called ejaculation, deposits semen in her vagina. Semen contains tens of millions of sperm. From the vagina, sperm can pass through the cervix, uterus, and fallopian tubes to fertilize an egg from the woman's body. Woman's egg. The lab will also look at the thickness of the semen. If the semen is too thick, the sperm will be trapped within it. Next, three main...